Like other great lakes in North America and Africa, Lake Baikal is truly an inland sea, complete with a wide range of environments. From surf zones, rocky cliffs, and river estuaries, to underwater canyons, it has its own species of sponge, weird deep water invertebrates, and endemic fish. But perhaps most fascinating is the Baikal seal, or nerpa, the world's only entirely freshwater species of seal. There are populations of freshwater seals elsewhere, the ringed seals of Lake Ladoga in Russia, the Ungava seal, a harbor seal that inhabits freshwater lakes in Quebec, and the harbor seals of Iliamna Lake in Alaska are three other examples. But it's easy to imagine how these seals colonized the lakes. The ocean is right next door. How on earth did seals get to Lake Baikal? Somehow, some way, the ancestors of the Baikal seal managed to reach the center of the Asian continent. Based on current evidence, just how did they manage to do it? An outdated idea was that Baikal seals and Caspian seals, who were also isolated from the greater ocean, became trapped in the interior of Asia back before the Miocene, when a vast arm of the Mediterranean, the Paratethes, stretched into the heart of the continent. The seals became isolated, according to this theory, as tectonic forces and a drying climate isolated the Caspian Sea and other bodies of water. The Paratethes wasn't connected to Lake Baikal, but it did bring seals much closer to the lake than any ocean connection today. A more widely supported theory was that Arctic seals in Siberian estuaries became trapped by ice sheets during glacial periods, and huge lakes formed in front of the ice. The lakes spilled into the Aral and Caspian Seas, raising their water level until they spilled into the ocean. They also brought deep, cold water with abundant fish much closer to Lake Baikal, though not all the way. According to this theory, Arctic seals from the north colonized the interior thanks to these large, pro-glacial lakes. But as of today, genetic data doesn't support either theory. The ancestors of the Baikal seal and the Caspian seal seem to have colonized their homeland in the late Pliocene, before any evidence of a massive, ice-dammed lake. Yet the Paratethes was also long gone by this time. The genetic evidence doesn't match up with any large, deep, watery pathway into the interior. So, did the ancestors of the Baikal seal use nothing but rivers to reach the center of the Asian continent? Could seals really swim over a thousand miles upriver to a new homeland? Is this an entirely ridiculous notion? Well, I can understand why you might think so, but I would argue it's not out of the question. According to some historical records, harbor seals were regular visitors to Lake Ontario and Lake Champlain before 18th century hunting pressure wiped them out. If it weren't for Niagara Falls, those seals might have been able to colonize the Great Lakes. And in modern times, Baikal seals have been sighted 400 kilometers downstream from the lake in the Angara River. But it isn't just the distance that makes this journey so surprising. Today, the river draining Lake Baikal has several rapids, and the topography wouldn't have been all that different in the late Pliocene. Is it hard to imagine a group of seals hopping around multiple series of rapids on their long journey into the hinterland without being picked off by predators? Again, I can understand why. But consider this story out of Delaware from 2017. In the winter of that year, a harbor seal entered a small creek that emptied into the Atlantic. He swam past oak trees and old barns until about 10 miles inland, he reached a spillway. But instead of turning around, he just hopped out into the adjacent parking lot, hopped about 100 yards up the driveway to the main road, hopped across the main road into the next parking lot, and slid down the boat ramp into the pond above the spillway. There, he spent a few months happily eating sunfish and bass before wildlife experts moved him in the spring. This might just seem like fun trivia, but I do think it says something more broadly about seals. That we shouldn't underestimate their inquisitive nature, or drive to explore and find new resources. We humans were there to witness this seal's journey because it happened in a more populated area. In the more sparsely populated far north, seals might swim upriver and hop around obstacles more often than we expect. However those brave seals reached Lake Baikal, their gamble clearly paid off. Today, their ancestors can swim and eat without worrying about orcas or Greenland sharks lurking in the shadows. Not a bad deal for a humble seal.
Thanks for watching.